Welcome to the Arizona Hydroponic Subterranean Greenhouse. Here it is. For those of you who have been following, nothing has changed with the construction of the greenhouse. And it is four feet underground for those of you who have been following. If you're new, I dug this all by hand and then laid the concrete block. These are all the new spring plants coming out of the winter. All the winter crops are pretty much done, like the lettuce. Here's the Brussels sprouts. And here are my champions. They are determinate, bush type. Probably about five or six tomatoes on there. They're doing quite well. Bottom left are the celebrities. They're a little bit stunted because the sun has not hit them yet with the angle coming through the greenhouse ceiling. Here are my big boys. They are indeterminate. These are actually last year's tomatoes. We actually had tomatoes all winter long, and here they are coming back in the spring. I'm still helping out the tomato plants with pollination with my toothbrush. It works every time. Here are my edamame. This is my first time growing them. It looks like they're doing well so far. This clip shows the water coming into the 2x4 tray and from the back it exits out the front. It's not your most traditional ebb and flow method. Some people have commented on my last videos on why I do this. This next clip here is going to show you because I like to use all the water possible. It goes from those trays into this small tray here, which is empty, or into this tray that actually still has some new lettuce seedlings that have come up. I'm still maintaining around 6.0 on the pH. The tomatoes absolutely love it. Same thing as the lettuce. They're taking in plenty of nutrients. Still using my TDS meter. It's so user friendly. I love this thing. I've been using jungle juice for the last probably six or eight months. Really happy with it. Pretty affordable. Haven't had any uh, any issues. Doesn't burn the plants. I'm still using Clonex. Always been solid. I've been using Clonex for probably 15 years and here's some tomato clones. Healthy as can be. In rock wool of course. I had a buddy kick me down some of these uh, booster nutrients. And uh, definitely notice a difference in uh, vegetative quality. So we'll see how this goes. I'm still using the evaporative cooler. Not so much now in the springtime, but it is crucial in the summer in Arizona. Also, it's amazing for pollination. So if I'm out of town, I don't have to worry about not having any flowers being pollinated. Great for air exchange. A beautiful morning like this, around 60 degrees. Unfortunately, this will not last. Here's a soil bed that I introduced since uh, probably the last time you guys checked out the greenhouse. I just wanted to introduce a lot more humidity into the uh, into the room and um, just to play around with clones, seedlings, and I just didn't have any other hydroponic equipment. And so might as well have the battle, hydro versus soil, but uh, it's always, it's worked out quite well. I always try to maximize, so I hang plants. Here's some basil. And to diversify a little bit more, we have our little succulent uh, arrangement here on the southern wall. Nice flowers, just to add something different. Doesn't require too much water. There's the southern sun just coming in on those flowers. It looks awesome. We've been composting on the property for well over 10 years. Your normal kitchen scraps, chicken drop-ins from the coop grass clippings. I turn the compost almost every single day. Um, plenty of moisture inside there. The next clip's actually going to show how we introduce the moisture. Uh, I just put a little sprinkler head inside there so it goes off on our perimeter irrigation like one of those little helicopter spinners. So it flies around there, hits the top of the, uh, the lid and keeps tons of moisture in there. It's great. We also have quite the population of worms inside. I couldn't even tell you how many thousands of worms we have inside here. I take them out, I put them inside the greenhouse, inside all those hydro trays. They love it. I can't tell you how many thousands we have inside there. We all know that the worm castings, their excrement is amazing fertilizer. Cover up that compost, don't let it dry out. Again, trying to maximize everything we got. We just have a small soil bed garden in the backyard. Gotta keep the dogs out of it though. 
Here's our green gauge plum tree. It's probably been in the ground for six or seven years. It sits right next to the compost heap that we just saw. It's doing quite well this year. Uh, plenty of plums. Here's our Arizona sweet orange. Got a Mexican lime. And we have an unknown lemon tree that came with the house when we bought it. Man, this thing cranks out lemons every single year. And you can't be a backyard gardener without a chicken. Or two. Or five. Built the chicken coop pretty much out of uh, reused materials. So Got to give them shade, plenty of water. You know, it's Arizona, it's hot. But these girls crank out an egg a day. Happy. Here is our aquaponic pond. Sometimes we roll some uh, some herbs. We got some uh, cucumber seedlings that I started in the greenhouse, and I pulled them out there and just kind of laid them in pots, and then they just kind of drink from the bottom of the pot coming through the uh, waterfall. The raccoons like to eat our fish, so we have very few fish every single year. It is pretty discouraging. So here again, the TDS meter. I don't maintain this, I, I don't alter it. It just runs its own ecosystem. But just for information, there it is. And again, I do not alter my pH. This is just for uh, educational purposes to show you what kind of pH comes out of an Arizona pond. Stay tuned for more videos. I'm definitely gonna be playing around with aquaponics with this pond a little more often. It's been in the ground for 10 years. It's time. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, make any comments, suggestions. I'm, all, I'm open to anything.